dynamic programming after that, which is Friday, April 29th, and you get a free 72-hour extension. So just a note about this, we talked about it the very first week, but this means that it is, quote, due Friday, but you won't have any late points taken off until 72 hours later. Because technically, Dr. Plank can't assign any assignment to be due after the last day of classes, which is that Friday, and you can't have anything due on a study day, so he has it due on Friday and then allows you to work, it on, work on it on the study day if you want to, um, at your own risk for you know taking up your entire study day with the lab. So again, this is a two-week lab, so let's take a look at it. All right, you only have one program to turn in this week. It's worddice.cpp, and it's using network flow. So you are going to be given um, some dice that have letters on each side, and might not necessarily be a six-sided dice. It could be four, it could be three, it could be some absurdly unimaginable number of dice, too, with letters on it. And they will be specified as strings, and so there's going to be one string per die, and it doesn't have to be in alphabetical order at all. You can see SAA is a three-sided die that starts with an S and has two A's. So this is one example of a dice file. ENG, SAA, PRR, EAE. So that's four dice, three-sided for each one of those. And you're also going to be given a list of words along with the dice. And your job is to see if you can spell the words using the dice so that each letter of the word is on a different die. So you have your dice list and you have your word list. And you're going to run the program Word Dice. And this is what your output should look like. So we're using the words rage, seep, er, pee, gasp. It'll tell you if you can spell these words and which dice you use to spell the words. So rage, R-A-G-E, was spelled with dice number two for the R, one for the A, zero for the G, and three for the E. So remember you can only use, like it says up here, <coughs> You can only use one die per letter. So right here it says each letter of the word is on a different die. So we couldn't use, for example, C. You can't use the same die if you only had um, one die that had an E on it and that was it. You couldn't use that E twice. So it seems simple enough. Um, but it's actually a little more difficult to solve. And we use network flow to solve it. So if we take our dice file and take our word file, we're going to look at one word at a time and consider that one word as a network flow graph. So with the words one.txt file, the first one is rage. So this example sets up four dice, the three-sided dice that we just looked at, and R-A-G-E. And like Dr. Plank says, it's an example of bipartite matching. So this is one group, this is the second group. The nodes within the group do not have any connections to each other. And there's two groups, so that's what makes it bipartite. And then he adds a source and a sink. And finding the maximum flow will discover if a matching exists. So that's, this is a very, very like kind of hand wavy explanation of what we're doing here. Um, but what we're essentially doing is saying, okay, can we find paths that take us from the source to the sink that go through each one of these letters and only use the dice exactly once for each letter? And we're going to use, I'll go into this more detail later, we're going to use Edmund Clark algorithm to determine the maximum flow, so that should be right here in your lecture notes. Different way 
ways of finding augmenting paths. And now he goes through some of the steps. So he says first step should be reading in the input files, organizing it, creating the network flow graph, printing it out. Notice that his program doesn't have duplicate edges. What he means by duplicate edges is we have one dice that says EAE, and on this picture he drew two lines to the E from this die because there are two E's. In his program, he doesn't actually implement that. He just creates one. Same with SAA. He just makes one edge from SAA to A because there's no point having two. So these pictures don't perfectly represent what he implemented down here below. Um, he just shows you the first step and then gives you some examples and talks about the great script. So he doesn't go into the rest of the steps, but the first step reading in and creating the graphs is probably the, um, the most annoying part of all of this because of how all well, you have to set up. Additionally, the creating the graphs, it's plural because when you are done figuring out if you can spell rage or not, you need to create a new graph with the next word. So what you do not want to do whatsoever is create a ton of graphs and not delete them over time. Because if your word list is really, really, really long, like a thousand words, you're going to be creating a thousand graphs with a ton of edges, who knows how many dice, um, and you're going to like either run out of room or your program's going to be really slow, one or the other. It's just not good programming to keep making graphs and not delete them. So one thing you could do is just delete each graph every single time, but what I do is I only delete this half of the graph all of the edges between the dice to the word nodes, all of the word nodes, all of the edges from the word nodes to the sink, and I keep the source, my dice nodes, and these connections because you're gonna use them every single time. Those aren't gonna change at all. So I'll go over that in more detail in a second too. All right, I'm gonna leave the examples and everything for you guys to read because you understand enough go on from here. This is just stuff you can read on your own. It's not interesting for me to go over. Alright, so let me grab these markers. And start with... Yeah. Okay. We're going to start with that because So in setting this up, I have some questions. I'm going to redraw this on the board over here. So I suggest having three classes, very similar to what we've done before, only they're going to be fleshed out with a lot more fields. Edge class, node class, and a graph class. So I think it's pretty obvious that these guys would be nodes, right? So we have 10 nodes in this graph. So no connection for that end. SAA we connect to the A. PRR we connect to the R. And EAE we connect to the A and E. So we need edges to represent these connections, right? So let's make an edge class. 
We also need to connect the source to all of the dice and the sink to all of the word nodes. And then I would also have a class graph as well. That is a vector of all your nodes and will hold all of our functions, among other things. So I'll go into detail about these in a second. Um, we'll start with the node class. So for the node class, I would have a node ID where the source is always node ID zero, and then your dice are the next IDs, and then your word dice, sorry, your word nodes are the next IDs, and the sync is the last one. I also created my own type, that was an enum, called node type, which looked like this. So I made this a type, and that way I could label these nodes as dice nodes, and I called this the type. I named this enum node type. That's why this matches up the node type here. And then I had a vector of Rules called letters, as well as a constructor for the node class. I'm going to put the constructor at the top. And I'll go over this in just a second. Let me add one thing. I had an int visited as well, because we're going to be using breadth for search, and you're going to need visited always in breadth for search. So in my constructor, all I did was I took visited, set it to zero to get it set up for breadth first search, and then this vector bool of letters should be 26 um, units long. And what this represents is given any node, what letters does it represent? So each unit, obviously, in the vector, if it's 26 pieces long, should represent 26 letters of the alphabet, right? So EAE in the E spot should have a 1, and the A spot should have a 1, and everything else should be 0. So that way I know, okay, this node represents E and A, or has an E and A on it. And then for my, for my word nodes with rage, only the R will be set to 1. And with the source and the sink, I think I just put them all set to one to make it work. You could do a few different things with the source and the sink, but I, they, I just said they represented all the letters, so I didn't really use it anyway. So that's what I did in the node constructor, is make sure that letters was resized to 26 and I just started everything with zero um, and set visited to zero when I made a node for the first time. And the last things we need are an adjacency list, of course, so that will be a vector of edge stars, which we have not talked about yet, and a back edge. Which we 